how do we qualify? Well, qualifying for airdrops has become increasingly complex and we have seen that every project learns from previous one. I think the mother of all airdrops is the Uniswap airdrop. Back then, back in 2020, every single wallet that ever did a transaction received 400 Uni tokens. Since that day, the airdrop requirements have definitely evolved and with Arbitrum we've seen a more complex one. Where we take a look at the Optimism one, we see that a big portion of their criteria was focused on people who are active in the Ethereum community in general and not specifically using their solution. Personally, I think the Optimism one was a bit of an outlier, so we're going to take a look at the Arbitrum airdrop requirements. First of all, because it was the latest one, and second of all, it was really successful. So it makes sense for other teams to take a look at what they did. Now, for those of you who really want to dive into the details of the Arbitrum airdrop system, I suggest that you take a look at the Arbitrum DAO documentation. I'll put a link in the description, and there you'll see all the details that you can imagine about how this point system worked. All right, let's go from top to bottom. And of course, the first thing you have to do with any airdrop is that you need to bridge your tokens to the network. In this case, they had two networks. So they had Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova. Second thing they did was take a look at how long you were active on the chain. Of course, this is not something you can change for ZK Sync, but it does mean the sooner you get started with qualifying for the airdrop, the better. After that, we see the transaction volume. This, of course, makes sense. If you want to use the network, you will have several transactions. I think it would be good to aim for at least 10 transactions on the network. This goes hand in hand with transaction volume. And in this case, they had several ranges. So first of all, we had $10,000, which I think is achievable. Then we have $50,000 and $250,000, which is probably not achievable for most of us. Now, why do I say that $10,000 is probably achievable? Well, imagine that you transfer $500, then it means that you just have to do 20 swaps. So if you do $500 USDC to USDT, and you do that several times, then you can easily get to $10,000 in transaction volume. The next one will probably be more difficult for us. This is the total amount that you transferred to the ecosystem. For Arbitrum, the minimum was $10,000, and then it goes up. The last criteria that they had was specifically for Arbitrum Nova. Now, when it comes to Arbitrum, they added the Arbitrum Nova solution pretty late, and that's why they don't have that many uh, criteria specifically for Arbitrum Nova. So the only thing you had to do is have at least three transactions to get these extra points. Now, before you panic, again, this was a point system, and the minimum you needed to have was three points, and then you already got an airdrop. Everything else was just bonus. All right, now that you know what CK Sync is and what the potential criteria can be, let's apply this to our CK Sync airdrop. So the first thing we'll have to do is bridge tokens. And for this, we go to the official website. Again, I'll put a link in the description. On the website, we go to network and then we click bridge. Next thing you do is connect your wallet and make sure that you have some Ethereum in that. Personally, it wouldn't surprise me that they require a minimum amount of Ethereum to be transferred. So I suggest that you transfer at least 0.05 Ethereum to the CK Sync network. As we can see, the gas fees are high again on Ethereum. So this is exactly why we need layer two solutions. Next, we click deposit and we sign the transaction. As soon as we have some Ethereum on CK Sync, we can start using the network. Now, before we can start using the network, we'll have to add the CK Sync network to our MetaMask and of course, change from Ethereum to the CK Sync network. To do this, just go to chainlist.org, type in ZK Sync, and then click Add to MetaMask. All right, right now we have Ethereum in our wallet to pay for the transactions, and we are on the right network. The next thing we have to do is choose an application and start doing transactions. The application I like to use is called SyncSwap, and it is very similar to Uniswap, as you can see. So once we arrive on the website, we connect our wallet, and then we click Trade. And over here, we can exchange our Ethereum to, for example, USDC. Now, it is very important to always keep some Ethereum in your wallet. Otherwise, you cannot pay for the transaction fees. In this case, I have 0.2 in my wallet and I will transfer 0.1 to USDC. The only thing I have to do now is click swap. And then sign a transaction in my wallet. Personally, I always try to do at least 10 different transactions, and I think it's also interesting to use different applications. Another criteria that some protocols have applied in the past is providing liquidity. So to provide liquidity, you could go to the SyncSwap website, go to pools, 
choose one of these pools. If you're providing liquidity, you always have risk of impermanent loss. So if you don't want that risk, you can choose a stable coin pool like this one. Then you provide BUSD, which is Binance USD and USDC. Normally, of course, with stable coins, the price will stay the same. So you don't have a risk that the price is going up and down. Personally, I'm going to leave the liquidity in until the airdrop is official. And then I'll take it out and use it for something else. Last but not least, ZK Sync has two networks. They have the first network that they started with, which is now called ZK Sync Lite. And then they have the new one, which they recently launched, which is ZK Sync ERA. Now, personally, I don't think they will be rewarding too much activity on ZK Sync Lite, but if you want to play it safe, you can do some transactions on there as well. Now, again, very important, these are two different networks. So if you put money on the ZK Sync ERA network, you cannot use it on the ZK Sync Lite network. So if you have a limited budget, it means you will have to send it to the ZK Sync ERA first, and then send some more money, some more Ethereum to the ZK Sync Lite and network as well. And sadly, if you're paying $16 to $20 for a transaction just to get the funds on there, this might get a little bit of expensive. On the other hand, if you have enough funds and you don't mind spending these kind of gas fees, you can give this one a try. The application that I use to get some transactions on the ZK Sync Lite network is called ZigZag. As you can see, this is a trading platform. So the only thing that I did was create a few transactions, switch from USDC to Ethereum and back. Right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and don't forget to post a little comment because that will help push this video in the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button right now. And then I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.